Geometry for Beginners, part three. Let's compute. Um, I thought we'd start the intro outside because there is a lot of snow and this is not normal for Reading. So I thought I'd show you guys what our Allen lab looks like in the snow, which you will not see every day. So here's our lovely Allen lab. And if you look over here, we have more of our beautiful campus. Now the university is actually closed um, and they're having a snow day, but we came in anyway to do the photogrammetry lesson. Um, yeah, the South American and the Californian managed to brave the snow even when everyone else couldn't. Let's head up to our office, which is just up there on the second floor and get started. Everyone, um, sorry for the interruption. Um, this is future Diana. Um, if you haven't noticed by the hair, but we made a bit of a boo boo when um, <laughs> making these videos. We didn't realize how long the screencast would be um, for the final video, and we didn't want to have you sit through a whole thirty minutes of this. Um, so we split it into part A, where you're basically doing all the prep work um, to then do the three D model. So masking, uploading, all that jazz. And then in the next video, we are going to be running the actual software and creating the three-dimensional model. So um, yeah, let's get started and head over to our computer and start doing some screencasts. All right, everyone, welcome to the virtual world. Um, Let's get started. So I've already uploaded my files onto the computer. Now I'm going to, I could talk forever about how much I love uniform filing systems and how useful they are, but I think I'll just give a quick little explanation. So you will end up with a lot of files when you do photogrammetry. So you need to make them kind of cohesive and understandable, um, especially if you're going to be sharing them with other people. Oops, I guess my software changes are required. Anyway, so I have a description of what the model is, so cornstone, and then I use our own find um, system here, just so that it's easy to search. Now, before I do anything else, I create my files before I even upload. So I have my images and my model. That's where my file is gonna go with my Adjusoft. All right, so in the images, I have my CR2 originals. So those are the ones uploaded directly from the camera. Then we have my DNG originals, which I will go over in a moment what those are. And my TIFF masked and edited, if I do edit the photos a little bit before I mask them. So let's go to CR2s. Now these are the images I took. So this is not the same cornstone that we took images of in the previous video. Um, this is another data set, but you can see the finished model of the cornstone that we did on Sketchfab. Now, CR2s are a proprietary file format that is unstable. Essentially, all camera companies have their own file formats. So, that cannot be opened in some programs, or they can expire and they do weird things because the CR2 file formats can change and alter and it becomes a mess. So you need one that can be stable and last forever. Now, CR2s, we don't need that file format. So what we're gonna do is put them into a stable file format called DNG or digital negative converter. You can now use this digital converter in order to get the right file formats. You can use TIFF as well, just as long as you don't use JPEG because you will lose information and your models will not come out. All right, let's see. So what you do is you select your folder, images, CR2 originals. See how easy it is with your uniform filing system? So select folder, images, DNG originals. Essentially these are just the CR2s stabilized and put into this folder without any sort of edits. 
Okay, now you're going to give it a file name. Now, I normally give it the same file name uh, as the um, folder so that everything is searchable. So, corn. Sorry, guys, I'm typing with one hand. Cornstone A underscore 2008 underscore 31 underscore 5068. Okay, and then I'm going to add a three digit serial number. Uh, make sure to switch it to 001 um, because the filing format system also helps with the naming because you need a consistent naming format in order for Agisoft to understand your alignment. All right, I'll press convert and it will run and I will pop back in a moment. All right, it's all converted. So I will be bending time and space a little bit because it's extremely boring just sitting here staring at um, a screen loading something forever. So I will be skipping little bits when I go through some of these processes, mainly just because they take forever to run. All right, now that we are done with our digital negative converter, we're gonna exit. Now, if you go to your images, we have our DNG originals and there they are. Now, they look fine. Um, I do not feel that we need to edit them um, in any way, um, but I'll just quickly show you how to do that. So I use Camera Raw, which is in Bridge. So what you have to do is select All, Open in Camera Raw. Now remember, you have to have every single one of these be exactly, exactly the same because Agisoft won't read it. So here we go. See, the lighting is pretty good. It's the color cast is fine. This is the place to check for color cast and correct it, but I will not be going over that. Um, I just really want to point out that you need to select all. So every single one of these needs to have the exact same exposure, the exact same color correcting, everything. But I would not do anything more than slightly tweaking exposure and correcting color. Otherwise, don't do anything else. Now, this is where I would save my images once I fix them into my TIFF edited folder. All right, I will just close this because we are not going to be doing that step. I'm going to go to my DNG originals and before I mask, I will quickly just go through them and sort them out and get rid of the different um, cue cards and any sort of test images. So select all your cue cards. And this is where having the big preview screen helps. All right. And if you notice in um, this round here, I have a few different ones one stone and then another one here. Now that just means that's a shot that didn't turn out so I just want to get rid of this. Now we have to make sure the naming is still correct um, so we're gonna have to fix that. Um, also I'm gonna pull up here on the side so you can see a little bit better. Um, if you notice we have a switch in our undershots because if you remember we go all the way up, up all the way down and then do our two sides under shots. So this is where the under shots happen. So here is the under shot. So as you see, it goes side and then under. Oop, it looks like we got a mover and a shaker. Okay, as you can see, we've got another one. It's very unprofessional. You can see this is where it flips. Now, if you keep this segment here, it's not going to work 
this will read as a separate model to Agisoft because it's essentially two different models. So you need to place these before your first shot of that side. No, I do not need software changes. Okay, so what we're going to do in order to get them in the correct position is to rename them. Press A. Rename them A. Okay. Now they're going to go to the top. So now they make sense. So it's a undershot, undershot, above. So now it makes sense. And it looks good. But now we have to correct the naming. I'm sure people will have their own way of doing this. Um, this is just my little way of doing it. I find it easier. So you just copy the name, rename, control V. So there's your name. So you just get rid of that last three digits, backspace, enter. And now you have all the correct file names. And now the fun bit, you get to mask. Now there are many different ways to mask and I actually prefer Photoshop, uh, but you can edit in Agisoft PhotoScan. Well, I do not like it um, at all. So I'll just show you quickly why. So this is our cornstone here. Now in order to mask this, um, you have, to go into your intelligent scissors because most of the time the magic wand does not work um, and you have to do this now depending on your object you don't perhaps need that close an edge because you can see there's a bit of a gap I'm just going to close this off so there's a bit of a gap in between the edges and the object now, you know, because of what I'm doing, I need to have a very scientific, academic level of accuracy. This needs to be as good as possible, um, but as it says, it depends. Also, if you have certain objects, it, just doing tons of little dots it can be frustrating. Um, also, it means you're going to have to export the mass, and there's all sorts of other steps. So, I actually use Photoshop because you can also do semi-automation. So here's the same image. Because of the automation, you can do something called actions. So I'm gonna create a new action and I'm gonna call it masking. Okay, record. And stop the recording just so I'm not getting these initial steps. So you're gonna use the option here, the quick selection tool. Now you can do things like doing alpha channels and all sorts of different things to mask, but I'll just go over this because it really is just the simplest way. Um, so you're just going to select your image. Now see with the sharp focus, it's really easy to go ahead and click it easy, get it nice and tight. Um, but there can also be some areas here, like there's this shadow that keeps going. So I'm just going to press the Alt button and just snap it in place. So you can see how close to the edges you're getting. There is some areas like this where there's a little bit of fuzziness where it doesn't click all the way or here, but it doesn't matter. That works pretty well. Actually, I will zoom in. Also, if you're doing this, you can do a bit of a spot check. Just test the quality of your images. All right, there we go. Everything looks good. So now I'm going to record. Record. Do the mask button here. Don't apply any layers. Just keep it the way it is. Then you're going to go File, Save As, TIFF Mast. So I'm just going to save as TIFF. 
I've already done a few of them in there. Uh, no compression. Make sure there is no compression. Uh, okay. Now you just stop your recording. Okay. And you're going to open just, let's say, another image. So that was 61. So I'm going to do 62. All right, here's this one. So this is a top shot. I'm just going to do my selection tool. Set it to masking. Press play. And it's all done. So if you get kind of good at it, you can do this quite quickly. Um, and all your masks are saved and your images are saved and it's all in a convenient file format. All right, back to reality. Um, we've just finished up our prep and masking. And in the next video, I swear we are not going to do any more surprises on you. We will be 3D modeling. Um, so thank you for hanging in there again. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time.